What is up YouTube, it's Terrence and I'm back with another video. I've been on the DaVinci Resolve subreddit and I'm seeing a lot of questions pop up. Can this be done in Fusion? Can this be done in Fusion? So I decided that I'm going to start a series. I'm going to be showing from the basics how I set up Fusion, which is actually today's video. And then I'll move into the basics of Fusion and from there on I'll move up and get more and more advanced as we go along. So let's get started. I think I should start by first showing how my fusion is laid out so you can see what exactly makes this work for me. The first thing I did is I changed the layout so I can have the viewer right here, the nodes right here, inspector here, and I can have the spline and keyframes down here. That's done by going to layout presets, fusion presets, and setting it to mid flow. By default, it looks like this, and I think this doesn't work very well because you've got a small area for the nodes. It's good for the, the viewers if you're showing two viewers at least. That's really good. But then the spline, the keyframes, and the inspector, you've got like four things down here. I don't think that works very well. You can always put this up here, but even then, you've got a really small area for the nodes, and I don't think that works out in your favor. So I set mine to mid flow. The next thing you might have noticed is that my toolbar, it has a lot of stuff on it. What I did was I right click, came to customize, and added, created a toolbar, right? Now my toolbar, it has the media in, media out. It has a background, it has this colored background thing. This is this is a custom node that, that I made. I can show you how to do that in the future. I can use this to quickly make like custom colored backgrounds with like a gradient and, and stuff like that. You've got backdrops, notes for making notes quickly, that kind of stuff. You've got the, the masking tools, tracking tools, 3D tools, and here you've got high quality, motion blur, proxy, and auto proxy. Now these can be found by coming here, right clicking, and you can turn them on or off, but I prefer having them right here so I can reach them quickly. This allows me to quickly import PSD files. This allows me to import SVG files. And this right here, it creates a black and white vector of anything that's on the left viewer. So let's say I added a, a text node, right? And I typed out, typed out this. Let's increase the size. I can hit this thing right here and it will run a script, create a vector and throw, throw me into Explorer. I can view it right here. I can then just simply copy this, hit SVG, paste and hit OK select my resolution and here it is I can actually enter here and I can move these out if I want to and if I just copy all of these splines right here I can get rid of these those aren't necessary you can see that I have the text that I made but now it's all splines I can edit I can do crazy animations, whatever the case is. If I hit Shift Alt T, I get this little toolbar that I can use to make a few changes to to the viewers. Like I can select the left, I can turn on the domain of definition and stuff like that. It's got a few useful tools on it. And I also used it to add these extra tools to the toolbar. I'll be showing you how to do that in a moment. I also have a bunch of useful shortcuts. If I want to transform this, for example, I can hit the T key to get a transform mode, I can move this around, rotate. If I want to blur, I can hit B, blur this. If I want to add a color corrector, I can hit C. If I want to quickly write something out, I hit W. If I want to import something and not drag it in, I can hit R to read. And a few other useful stuff. I can hit Shift T, for example, to get a 3D transform. I can sh hit Shift I to get a 3D image plane, that kind of stuff. Instead of using Control Space, to get this select tool dialog, I just hit the tab key. All this was possible by using Nuke to Fusion from the Fusion Reactor. You may also notice that everything that I import here that's a media file, you can see a preview of the thumbnail right here. If it's text, you can see a preview of the text. That's because I right clicked and turned on Force Source Style Pictures. That way you can see the, the source file for everything that you, you have in your composition. I also turned on arrange to connected. That means if something is connected, like this transform is connected to the image, for example, it will snap into place as I get close to it, right? I don't like snap to grid most of the time, so I, I like to use this right here. I also turned off auto arrange because auto arrange tends to move things around. 
and things can get crazy if you have a, a really neat composition. Like for example, if I were to have this right here and I decide to add a blur, I hit B, it's gonna move this out of the way. But if I have auto arrange turned off and I hit B, it just puts it below it and then I'm free to do whatever I want with this, right? I also went in the options and I turned on build flow vertically. I turned off auto remove routers because if I were to say, let's say I added a router right here, right? And I wanted to swap out this file. If I remove that, then the router stays. If, if it was off, then this router would have been removed. And if I dragged in a new file, I would need to connect and then rebuild all the routers. I would need to recreate all the routers that I used to make the script look a little bit more neat. So I like to keep that off so I can delete something and it doesn't delete the routers that are attached to it. The other thing that I turned off is the grid. I don't know, I just don't like the grid. If you do, keep it on. If you don't, you can turn it off. Moving on to the keyframes and splines. What I like to do here is right click, come into options and disabling enable marker grab. Because if I'm on the edit page and I place down some markers and I go back to fusion, let's say I wanted to animate something and I wanted to time it precisely. If I were to put a keyframe right here, and I wanted to move this keyframe, I wouldn't be able to do this. It would move the marker instead. So if the marker grab is enabled, and I tried to move this keyframe, it's gonna move the marker, which is not what I wanna do. So I disabled marker grab, and now I can grab my keyframe and move it around. The same here, went to options and disabled marker grab. Sometimes it stays off, other times I need to turn it off by project like I'm doing here. Now, the other thing that I did that made Fusion really easy to use is changing the grab distance and I'll show you. Let's go over here to Fusion and Fusion settings. Let's click on flow. Let's have a look at these options that we have here. The pipe grab distance, I turned this all the way up to 10 pixels. The link grab distance, I set that to 20 pixels and the group opacity, I had that set to 100%. And if I should turn the link grab distance down to I don't remember what it was by default, but let's say it was like five pixels, right? Came here and I tried to, to, to click this. I would need to be very close to it, like five pixels close to grab it. If I try to grab from here, that works. From here, it doesn't work. So you need to be way more precise when you're doing this stuff, right? But if I came to the settings and turned this all the way up to 20, hit save, I can grab from 20 pixels away. So even this far away, I can still grab to make a link and it's the same down here I can grab from pretty far and drag it to make a link so fusion settings you want to turn these all the way up and the group opacity if it's low it gets kind of annoying because you see a bunch of nodes in the background you're not sure what's in the group what's outside the group so I turned this all the way up I also changed a few other settings in here on the user interface, I turned the grab distance all the way up to 10 from whatever it was before. I'm not sure what it was. And also here, the touching and mouse wheel. I think it's set to, to shift by default or alt or something like that, but let's say it was set to, to shift and alt, right? You can't just use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You gotta hold the alt key or the shift key or something like that. And I found that to be very annoying. There's some trick turning this off, right? So here in the fusion settings, you need to, if you try to click shift, alt, control, it'll always just be jumping between them. You can't just turn them off like this. What you need to do is click ignore, and then you can turn off ignore. Weird, but that's how it works. Hit save, and now you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out, and you can click the, the middle mouse button and just drag around. The other change I made is under general, here where it says use simplified copy names. You might need to restart to get this to work, so I'm not sure if it'll work right now, but the behavior of copying and pasting nodes is, like in my case, it gives me underscore one, two, three, four, five. Before it was doing this weird thing where it would give me underscore one, and this would be blur one, underscore two, underscore one or something like that. It's gonna add an underscore and a number for each copy and it gets really messy over time. So this is a good solution to that. It simplifies the naming. Now let's move on to the workspace. A cool reactor that I have is Attribute Spreadsheet. And what Attribute Spreadsheet does is it allows me to select a bunch of nodes, hit refresh, 
and then it's gonna load all of these up in a spreadsheet kind of like like Microsoft um, Excel and I can search for any property on this spreadsheet so let's say I needed to search for let's look at the blur let's say I need to change all of them from fast Gaussian to multi box right I can do filter and it's gonna find the filter property you can see that blur one underscore 14 is set to multi box which is the one that I have selected right here and the rest is fast Gaussian so I can copy multi box I can drag select everything and if I start typing just paste and now everything is set to multi box all of these so this will allow me to make quick batch changes to different nodes and it doesn't even need to be the same kind of node let's select the color correct let's select the transform the blur and this image plane hit refresh and you'll see all the properties for all of these nodes even though they aren't the same but all of them have a blend property for example I can do a search for blend so let's put that at 0 0.4 this at 0 0.2 let's put this at 0 0.8 this is a really powerful tool you can see what it's capable of you can select a bunch of stuff and make a bunch of changes to a bunch of different nodes all at once thanks for sticking with me through all this madness now it's time for me to show you how to install a reactor and how to get attribute spreadsheet and nuke diffusion so to get your hands on a reactor here is what you need to do Let's go to google.com and you want to search for a stake underwater reactor and here where it says getting started with reactor click that link it's going to take you to the we suck less forums and you want to scroll down to where you see the download link which is right here you're going to hit save it's going to give you a .lua file now let that download and here's a file it's going to drag it and release it in fusion you're gonna get this pop-up right here asking you where to install you can choose a custom path I recommend just clicking install and launch you're gonna do that and then you can find it under scripts workspace scripts reactor open reactor it's gonna take a sec to open the first time now you can start installing these extra plugins they call them atoms the first one I recommend searching for is attribute spreadsheet. You can download this. You're also going to need to install Python 3.8. You can find that through a quick Google search and it's going to install PySide 6. If it doesn't install PySide automatically, you can come here to workspace, scripts, attribute spreadsheet and install PIP package. It's going to run the terminal and install it for you. The next thing I recommend is nuke to fusion. You want to grab this. just. Hit the plus icon it's going to install it and you'll have all the cool shortcuts that i have and then you can search for a toolbar and you want to install toolbar for fusion 16. now this is where i got this cool tool i can hit shift alt t and it gives me this toolbar that i can pretty much add anything to i recommend setting it to launch at mouse hit save i'm not sure how to move this window around really so it just launches wherever my mouse is and when I'm done, I click exit. But what I like to use this for is adding extra tools up here to this toolbar. So you click this little arrow and click add toolbars. And actually you can hit new and it creates a whole new toolbar up, up here that, I can, that you can add extra things to. I can't get this to save for whatever reason. It disappears after you exit DaVinci Resolve. But whatever is up here, it's going to stick around. Cool thing about it is you can use it to add things that are in the menus that you usually can't just drag to the toolbar. This is what I used to add the fusion, import, PSD, and SVG because I hate coming up here and going through all these menus. So I came here where it says um tool view UIs. Under utilities, I can simply just click, I can click, drag, and just drop it. Once you're done, you hit OK and you can close resolve. It'll save the options and you'll have your fancy toolbar whenever you get back. Just remember, enable the toolbar. If you're on the default, you're just gonna have the default tools. You can enable your custom toolbar. And that brings us to the end of today's video. So we went over the user interface, setting up a few things, changing a few settings to make things work a little bit easier. And also installing Reactor, getting Nuke to Fusion, and Attribute Spreadsheet. Reactor has a ton of cool plugins that you can check out and install. I recommend going through and seeing what you like and what can work in your workflow. But Toolbar 16, Attribute Spreadsheet, and Nuke Diffusion, those are three must-haves for me. 
So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. We are actually start doing something inside of Fusion and we'll move on from there and get more and more advanced. It's Terrence and I'm signing out.